Okay. Well, uh, welcome then, uh, David Clark from Synaptica Knowledge Solutions, who will talk about giving taxonomies another degree of how concepts uh, are applied to content um, beyond posting counts. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, and great to be back at uh, DCMI, although um, we missed the face contact, but it's great to be doing this virtually. So thank you for inviting me today. Uh, very quickly, um, what my company does is we help people organize, categorize and discover enterprise knowledge. Uh, we've been around for 25 years, developed thesaurus management software that has evolved over the years to ontologies and knowledge graphs. Um, so I'm gonna to talk uh, today <clears throat> about a particular challenge, which is um, how the people developing the conceptual vocabularies that become the values in metadata, uh, how they um, ra can raise their awareness of how the taxonomies are being used. Uh, because taxonomists don't always get to see how, uh, how the vocabularies are used against content, and that limits their ability to judge uh, which terms are popular and may need to be developed and split out versus which are not being used and may need retiring. So there is a, a traditional way of helping with this um, from library science, and that's called posting counts, where you can bring back into a taxonomy or a thesaurus a count of the number of times that a particular concept or term has been used to index content. So posting counts are valuable. They provide a metric of um, how, uh, how concepts, how many times concepts are being used against a corpus. But we were approached by a client who said, um, the numbers alone, the metrics alone, aren't enough. What we want is to be able to see a qualitative as well as a quantitative view of how taxonomy terms are being applied to uh, content. So that was, um, if you like, the, uh, the challenge that we were, were given. The solution that we came up with was essentially to use uh, bi-directional APIs um, and the particular content management system that uh, uh, we, we developed this for a particular client um, was Atlassian Confluence. So this client had a massive wiki, 5 million pages, um, a very large wiki. Uh, and by the way, the subject matter that I'm displaying on screen here is uh, not the clients. This is just hypothetical stuff about chemistry and chemical elements and so forth. Uh, the, uh, the particular data obviously being proprietary. But their particular uh, example, they had a corporate wiki, huge wiki, lots of pages, and they were building a corporate ontology. And they needed to create a much better uh, view for the ontologists and taxonomists of how, uh, how this was being used. So the bi-directional API, essentially, um, when uh, it opens up a window from within the content management system, uh, where you can see the taxonomies and tag pages. But whenever a page is tagged, it doesn't just send the concepts and their URIs to uh, the content management system. It also sends back um, a collection of metadata about the piece of content directly into the ontology. So there were some obstacles to overcome. Um, one is the challenge of scale. Uh, taxonomies and ontologies that typically have hundreds or a few thousand entities in them, um, whereas content management systems can have millions of pages, as was indeed the case that we were working with. So when we bring back content uh, metadata into the ontology management system, um, we have a, a challenge of scale. We have um, certain areas of the ontology that are the conceptual vocabularies and terminologies. They measure in the hundreds and thousands. And then we have links out to millions of instances of pages um, that are uh, indexed to that. Um, so uh, we have transcended that in terms of scale. We can perf uh, deliver performance search and linking across millions of pages of content. 
um, to the thousands of, of concepts in the ontology. The second challenge to overcome was change management. Um, a wiki is very much not a static thing. Uh, pages can be deleted, renamed, moved, their URLs can change. And synchronizing these changes back to the taxonomy management system uh, is challenging. Again, um, by building the right triggers into the APIs, we've been able to transcend those challenges so that the systems are always synchronized. If a page changes its title, that synchronizes back to the taxonomy management system. If a concept obviously changes, it can propagate back to the content management system. So how do we do all of this? Um, we had to build a plugin for Atlassian Confluence and that plugin uh, just installs. It's one of the you know, add-on components to uh, Confluence. And once installed, you can go into a particular, uh, uh, the, the way Confluence organizes the wiki is called spaces. So you define spaces in Confluence for particular collections of pages and, and content. So we can go in, we can pick a wiki space, and then we can connect it to the ontology through a series of controls, which are manifest through, uh, through the plugin. Once the plugin has been set up, we, uh, we will also, um, we will connect it to a project inside the ontology management system. And a project is essentially a container of KOS, of knowledge organization systems. So we can put multiple uh, KOS into a project. We can connect a wiki space to the project, and then we can finally control which taxonomies they see, which Scots collections they see, whether they can see candidate terminology or only approved terminology. There's a great degree of, um, of refinement there. But what we essentially do with the profiles that we set up is we build the metadata slots or elements for tagging a page. And these can obviously be different across different wiki spaces. So here we are saying, um, I want to uh, tag this page with values from a scheme of chemistry terms, from a, a taxonomy of chemistry terms. And we've also created metadata slots to tag it by GEMET, which is the European Union Environmental Sciences Taxonomy, um, and UNESCO, uh, the uh, UNESCO Cultural Heritage Taxonomy. So we can build multiple um, metadata slots and wire them, so to speak, through the profiles to address particular uh, taxonomies and subsets of taxonomies. We then need to have some uh, tagging um, experiences. So the first and simplest one is autocomplete search. So if you go into a metadata slot and start typing, it will very, very rapidly, high performance search, um, start to deliver uh, the autocomplete search results. And with those uh, search results, you simply select, uh, click on any one of those concepts that you want, and that will get added to, uh, added to the tag, uh, tags on that page. The second experience is uh, browsing. So um, uh, if uh, a particular taxonomy or part of an ontology class structure has a hierarchical organization, then you can go from the very top, from the cost container, uh, down through the hierarchy and select or multi-select those particular concepts that you want to tag to the page. So that's the second experience. And the third one is uh, if you don't find what you're looking for in these schemes, you can submit candidate terminologies, uh, candidate terms directly from the Confluence system and it will be uh, directed to the target, to the destination uh, taxonomy um, as a candidate term. And we can obviously control um, whether we want to allow that and if we want to allow it for which particular schemes uh, we would want to allow candidates term submission. So after a page is tagged, the uh, page itself 
has um, a set of existing tags for, uh, for the page. And here we can see we've got on this, particular, uh, uh, on this particular Confluence page, we've got a set of tags. Some of them are from uh, Gemmet, from UNESCO, and from the chemistry uh, vocabulary. Uh, any one of these um, can, or is also a link. So if you want to say uh, which other pages in the wiki um, are tagged with climate change mitigation, you would simply cl uh, click on that and you can then explore the related pages in the wiki that share that, uh, that particular tag. Now this is the bi-directional bit. So when, um, when a page is uh, tagged in confluence with uh, terminology from the ontology, metadata about that page, wiki page, is then sent back to, um, uh, to the taxonomy or ontology management system. So we have a KOS here called Confluence Pages, and this is a scheme that we define in the ontology uh, and we give it data properties for uh, a title, the page title, um, and for the URI in the, uh, in the wiki, so the wiki's URL, um, wiki page URL. We can define additional elements to bring back from Confluence and store in the graph as well, but uh, right here we're taking the, the bare essentials, which is the page title and the page URL. Then um, in the center section, are all of the particular tags uh, that are tagged to this particular page in the wiki grouped by the um, knowledge organization system, the KOS from which those terms uh, originate. So again, there we've got the UNESCO, GEMET and chemistry terms. If we click through to a term, so here we're, we're on a term called carbon dioxide in a chemistry uh, taxonomy. Um, it will display its link out to uh, the chemistry pages. So this is basically, once we bring this, all this data back into the ontology, we can search um, conceptually, we can search by wiki pages, we can see qualitatively the pages that are linked to any particular term and we can follow the links we can then say you know uh right i see all the all the pages that are linked to carbon dioxide now let me go and look at all of those pages and see what other concepts they're linked to and so on and so it goes on you explore the graph uh, of of data so the essential, um, the essential objective was to create this 360 degree view, uh, which we have uh, done here. Um, and the benefits of this is uh, we can view posting metrics and the qualitative information, page titles and terms directly within the taxonomy system without having to jump out to the content management system. We can link from pages to terms and, and uh, from pages to uh, uh, so terms to pages, pages to terms, and explore that. And essentially what we've got then is a knowledge graph that incorporates taxonomies as well as content metadata. And this is very significant. Um, this last slide is the, uh, the ascending value add of what we all do. So if we start at the very bottom, we build lexicons. They're just unstructured, but control vocabulary lists of, of terminology. We can then add hierarchy and we get into the taxonomy word, world. We can build the sori with associations and synonyms. We can build ontologies which have the configurable data properties, uh, semantically expressive relationships, class types, and so on. And as we go up, we're, we're going from standardizing terminology Class, the ability to classify content, the ability to do precision search, the ability to present logical models with ontology of um, uh, that then support machine interest, uh, machine inferencing. But the very last and highest level here is knowledge graphs. And um, an important thing is if you build an ontology and you store it in a triple store, you still don't have a knowledge graph. You have a knowledge graph when the KOS, when the taxonomy and ontology is actually connected to data or metadata about content 
and that data or metadata is brought into the graph. Only then do you have a knowledge graph. And when you do that, you have the ability to do um, discovery and analytics of the entire enterprise knowledge. So that's 14 minutes, 45 seconds, and the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dave. Um,